Today we're talking about the most underrepresented brand of Star Wars in the entire Black Series line, so let's get into it. Hello there, welcome back to the channel. I am Grand Moff Tony. You know, something I really love about the Black Series is that it gives all corners of the Star Wars story equal representation in the line. Like, back when I was first starting to collect these figures, uh, I thought it was amazing that I could get Rebels figures, because at the time, even though the fan base would like you to forget about this, Rebels wasn't very popular back then, and the same can definitely be said for Solo and the later sequel movies as well. It didn't matter what corner of Star Wars the characters were coming from, it didn't matter particularly how well received or not that era was, you got your shot in the Black Series. Well, there is one Star Wars show where that cannot be said. Star Wars Resistance. This was really our first look on screen between the movies Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. The first show set in that 30 year gap of unexplored canon. So so yeah, I really didn't get on board with Star Wars Resistance until about 2018. I think that's when I finally sat down and watched it. And while it didn't give me exactly what I was looking for, because I really wanted to see where did the First Order come from and like how did the Resistance end up being formed, but there was something about it that really caught my interest. There was something about watching the way that the First Order was weaseling their way into power and you could finally start to explore this empty period in the canon and start to see, hey, the New Republic's not doing a great job right now. I've said before that I really appreciate a focused narrative that centers around a specific group of people rather than a, a great sprawling anthology. So focusing on, admittedly, the larger crew of the Colossus than we're used to, that really appealed to me. And there's such a broad and diverse character list, you really can't go wrong. With all that being said, that broad and diverse character list is nowhere to be seen in the Black Series. Currently, to date, if I'm doing my research right, we have two Star Wars Resistance figures in the Black Series. We have the formerly Disney Parks exclusive, moved Target exclusive, Commander Pyre, which is a fantastic figure and I absolutely love it. And we also have CB-23, but CB-23 is trapped behind a paywall because you have to purchase a massive droid set to get anywhere near her. And that's it. That's all we've got in the Black Series in the way of Star Wars Resistance characters. So that made this list really, really easy. So easy, in fact, that I had to expand it out to a top 10 list because I'm gonna stick my neck out here. I really, really like this show. I really like the characters. I really like the story. And where season one kind of lays the foundations of the story, season two takes it places that you could never expect it to go. And that's why today on the Wishlist series, I'm gonna be bringing you my top 10 picks for characters from Star Wars Resistance that I would like to see come to the Black Series. But obviously we're going to be following my usual rules for this series, no Haslabs, no vehicles. So yeah, let's get into this with some honourable mentions. First up, I'm going to cheat already because my first pick is Flix and Orca. I absolutely love these two characters and I would buy a twin pack of them tomorrow. Now obviously I don't know how feasible this would be because Flix is very, very top heavy and he's got very very, very skinny legs, but I don't know how well that would translate into Black Series. I mean, they've done some pretty top-heavy characters in the past. I feel like they could get away with it, and there would be ways around it, even if you could only really pose his legs one way. I just love these guys, and I really want figures of them. Another honorable mention, and another breaking of my rules, as always, it's just any of the aces. Now, I'm going to mention a couple of specific aces on the list, but really just any of them. I love how these guys look. They are fantastically detailed. There are some great alien characters in the Aces lineup, which obviously the Black Series does really, really well. I really would just take any of these guys. Yeah, the Aces are easy picks as well. That's my honorable mentions out of the way. Let's get into the actual top 10. Coming in at number 10 is Elric Von Reg. Obviously, I mentioned Commander Pyre earlier on, and Von Reg is another standout First Order character. Elric has such a striking red design and the Black Series does red really really well. You just have to look at the Praetorian Guards or the Imperial Royal Guards to really see what I'm talking about there. So a First Order TIE Fighter pilot all in red would just be incredible and I would buy it 
immediately. And really, that just comes down to the fact that I just love unique characters in familiar armor. I mean, I've asked for Aiden Versio in the past. I really, really like Captain Cardinal. These are great characters, and they would look fantastic in Black Series form. You don't even need to put a ton in the box. Really, he just needs a blaster, and you, you just run with that, and he'd look brilliant. And really, if you think about it, it's another opportunity to make use of that great Imperial TIE Fighter pilot body. You could easily use that, slap a new coat of paint on it, give it like an updated overlay and an updated helmet, and you'd be away. It would just look awesome. I feel like it would be so, so simple. I don't know why we haven't done it yet. Elric Von Reg is an easy choice for number 10. The First Order would like to offer you our help. You need us, Dozer. These pirate attacks are escalating. At number nine, we have Niku Vozo. Every, every ounce of my being didn't want to like this character back when I first started watching the series, but my god, does he grow on you. And I just find him so endearing and so enjoyable. And of course, we have to address the elephant in the room here. Niku is a Nikto. So that would bring the Nikto head sculpt into the line. Obviously, we'd have to rework it a little to make sure he is immediately recognizable as the Colossus is incredibly enthusiastic engineer, but my god, it would be so, so good. The Black Series does a great job with aliens all the time. Niku would just be fantastic to get into the line. Obviously, you're going to see throughout this list, I really want the main cast in Black Series form because they're just not there and they're missing. I've got teams of characters from every corner of Star Wars canon except here, and I want them. Stick some techie stuff in the box with him, like some engineering equipment, data pads maybe, Get him his little fish friend, or those little bitey things that they're always trying to, I, I assume, eat throughout the show, and it's kind of horrifying. Why wouldn't we want to have Niku? Like, Niku is so much fun. And to be honest, in terms of articulation, as long as he can do this so I can make him look like he's running, I'll be happy. It'll be so brilliant. You, I just want it. I just want Niku in the Black Series. He is an easy pick for number nine. Good luck! Try not to disintegrate anyone! At number eight, we have Tam Rivera, and I don't usually have to do spoiler alerts on these videos because usually it's a pretty done deal that you've seen this stuff, but with Resistance, maybe not, I guess, so spoiler alert. But of the two appearances of Tam, I kind of want the First Order look. I kind of want the uniform that she wears when she joins the First Order, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, I feel like it would make it much more appealing for Hasbro to produce because really all they have to do is just reuse the old TIE Fighter pilot body and stick a new head on there because I would want a head. You have to have the head on there because she's constantly not wearing her helmet in the show to kind of depict that she's not really sure that she's made the right choice. But I mean, I would go for both looks. I, I There was part of me that wanted to include both looks on the list, but there were just too many characters. There are just too many people on this show that I want to get in the Black series. So that part of the story, like her turning her back on her friends and joining the First Order, was mind-blowing. We have seen so many characters do the opposite in canon, but this was one of the first opportunities we got to explore a character going the other way. A character who was so angry and so resentful that she actually said, you know what, sod this, I'm gonna go and join the army. Because <laughs> when she's on the Colossus and she's in her engineering gear through season one, I don't know, I never really connect to her the way I connected to some of the other characters on the show. But when she really went all in and joined the First Order, that's when I got interested in her character. It's a great story arc. I would love to get it in figure form. Tam, as a First Order TIE fighter pilot, is an easy pick for this list. I can't believe it. I'm finally a real pilot. At number seven is Tora Dozer, and I, I really went back and forth on this one. Like, do I want Tora Dozer or do I want Captain Dozer? Because they're both really cool characters, and there's a lot of interesting stuff with Captain Dozer and like his history with the Empire. But I just love Tora so much, and yeah, I promise this is my last Aces pick after I put the Aces in the honorable mentions. She's just such a great character. I absolutely love her. She has probably the most standout design of the whole series. Like, she's so colourful, bubbly, and over the top, and I absolutely love it. Like, she's just such a great character for the series. And really, the reason she is so high on this list is because she was the reason that I was looking at those genuinely not very good three and three quarter inch Star Wars Resistance figures, because I like her character design so much. I just want to have her somewhere. 
like somewhere on a shelf just bringing an unnatural amount of light and bubbliness to it because I love her design that much. I feel like this would be a pretty easy figure to produce. You could really use that old Jaina Solo mold, which was so, so good when it came out. Give it a far more colorful splash of paint and it would be a really, really good Tora figure because let's face it, it's basically just like a pilot's uniform, but just a really, really colorful one. <laughs> so I would be on totally on board with that kind of reuse to bring her in. And she's absolutely bursting with accessories that you could put in the box as well. You've got her little pet. You've got, I think she's got a plushy Ewok doll on her bed. Stick that in the box. Like, <laughs> I would love that. That would be brilliant. I don't know, man. I absolutely love this character. I think she'd be a great figure, especially if they use that Jaina Solo body. Tora is an easy pick for number seven. Father found out you used to be a pilot for the New Republic, and I keep a very close eye on my father's business. So, I wonder, what are you doing here? Really? Coming in at number six is Lieutenant Gallic. Are you starting to see a pattern with these picks? I want more First Order characters in the Black series. And Gallic is so much fun. Like, as a, not quite a villain. I mean, she's definitely a bad guy, but she does lean more on kind of the, she's just a really inconvenient antagonist. And she becomes an antagonist even for Tam when she joins the First Order. Like, she's just so, so mean. Like, this towering, bulky figure. She's got that great moment moment where she's just like, you know, put your helmet on, you haven't earned the right to be seen yet. I just think that's brilliant. She reminds me a lot of Trunchbull from the old Matilda movie. That was the impression that I got straight away as soon as she walked on screen. I was like, that's basically the Trunchbull joined the First Order, and I am absolutely here for it. And being as I've talked a lot about reusing TIE Fighter bodies, I don't think you can get away with it with this one. She is just so bulky. She looks like she works out like every minute she's not on screen. <laughs> People are just gonna come down to the hangar bay and she's just bench pressing a TIE Fighter. I really wouldn't put it past her. I don't know, I just love an enjoyably cruel antagonist and that's the impression that she gives off. She looks like she enjoys being a drill sergeant and that just makes me happy. And I feel like it would look so, so good on the shelf. Like, she's got such an imposing character design that if you just stand her in the background of a First Order display, like, I've always thought about building up, like, a Starkiller-based display with all my first orders and like just have all the characters up on the stand even though they weren't there for the scene just have them standing there and have all the troopers out in front if lieutenant gallic was in that display she would dominate it no matter where she was like you could put her in the back corner and your eye would be immediately drawn to her in the way of accessories you're probably just gonna have to have a blaster i don't think that the black series way of doing helmets would really work with her because I don't, i'm a, i'm seeing her head in in my mind and i I don't know if a Black Series helmet would go over that head and sit naturally. So, I don't know, you'd have to do some figuring out like they did with Echo, but she's an absolutely great character. She's a great antagonist. Lieutenant Gallic comes in at number six. You embarrass me in front of Commander Pyre. You say nothing. Our order is built on survival of the fittest. If one pilot can't do their duty and they die serving the First Order, so be it. At number five, and I promise this is the last of the First Order picks, it's Agent Tierney. Now, this character is so much fun. She just oozes authority. Like, every scene that she's in, she never seems like she's gonna lose her cool. She's just stood there and she looks so calm. You almost believe her. When she's talking to Tam and she's trying to win Tam over, or she's manipulating her into trying to get her to help them find the Colossus in season two, you almost buy into it. You almost believe that she's on Tam's side and she's doing it for the right reasons, but obviously she's not. She's in it for herself. She's effectively the Agent Callus of Star Wars Resistance, and maybe that's why I like her so much, because I am a diehard Callus fan, so maybe that's what this is all about. I talked in my Battlefront wish list about wanting to get the ISB agent into the Black series, and I, <laughs> I totally thought when I was doing the list that the ISB agent was a dude, but obviously she's not. This would be another opportunity to get that great looking mold into the Black series because I feel like that's 
basically what she's wearing. She's basically wearing ISB uniform. But it's such a great look for a female antagonist. I feel like it would translate so, so well into Black Series. That and she's got a really unique facial design. Like she's got those scars and I recently picked up the Clone Wars pre Vizsla figure and saw what a great job they did with his scar. But I just love it when characters on the shelf have got that little detail for you to focus in on. I feel like it would look so, so good. I don't know, man. She's slippery. She is a nasty piece of work and I would just love to get an action figure of her. Agent Tierney is the number five pick for characters from Resistance I'd love to see come to this line. You know, I wasn't born into the First Order. I brought you here because I saw the same potential in you and you've surpassed all my expectations. At number four, we have Captain Kragan Gore. I said that Resistance had a diverse cast of characters. Well, welcome to possibly the most diverse character in the show. I loved the look of all of those pirates. They really play so, so well into one of my favorite aesthetic details in Resistance, which is you look at characters and you look at what they're wearing and you realize, hang on a minute, that's a broken down piece of Imperial gear that guy's wearing. Hell, I'm not even sure if Kragan is wearing a captain's rank plaque, but he is such a unique character design. It's a great opportunity to get the Quarren head sculpt into the Black Series, which obviously that's going to pay off with some Jabba's Palace denizens or some, you know, cantina patrons down the line. But primarily, I want this Davy Jones looking guy on my shelf. I talked about this back in the Mandalorian wish list when we talked about that Pirate King. This is another pirate that I need to get into this line because he is so, so cool. He is honestly one of my favorite characters in the whole show. He's just so out there, you know? He, he's so transparent the whole time. He doesn't even, like, he doesn't even cover it up all that much. He's just like, oh yeah, I did this great thing for the ship. I'm a way better captain than you, Dozer, blah, blah, blah. And I love it. Honestly, I could really go for any of these pirates. I mean, hell, they've got B2 super battle droids at one point, and obviously they're coming to the line already. Hey, get me some beaten up ones. Have some pirate super battle droids. That'd be brilliant. But really, at the end of the day, what it's about is this guy. It's this nasty quarren git that's just a constant thorn in everyone's side. I don't know, Matt. I just love this guy, and he's got such a unique design that it'll probably have to be, like, another situation like we had with Saw Gerrera, where it's gonna be mostly a new mold. Although, I don't know, all of these pirates are wearing, like, beaten up old Galactic Civil War and hell, even Clone Wars gear. Maybe they could mishmash something together from existing parts in the line. Just give him some really cool piratey gear and stick him in a box and I'll buy him. I don't even care. It's so, so cool. I just want him in the line, and yeah, he is an obvious pick for this list. Captain Kragan Gore comes in at number four. Before you go, do me a favor, Doza. Call me Captain, and I might, just might, spare your life. Coming in at number three is the main guy himself. It's Kazuda Ziono. Now, this guy is, by no stretch of imagination, my favorite Star Wars protagonist, but he really grows on you over the series. Like, he kind of drives you nuts in the first season, in a, like, in a similar way to the kind of way that Ezra kind of drives you nuts in his first series, too. But here's a guy who's just legitimately trying to do the right thing, and he is such a klutz. Like, I, just, I think he walks into something or bangs his head or something like that in every single episode of the series. You're constantly waiting for it. Like, when's it gonna happen? When's he gonna trip over or walk into a pipe or whatever? But really, it just kind of endears you to him and I can't figure out why. I've talked in the past about not really knowing where in Star Wars Rebels I started to care about Ezra. But with Kaz, it's even harder to nail down. I think it's probably when Hosnian Prime is destroyed. Like, that's probably when I'm like, oh, that really sucks. Like, that's his whole world, and that's gone. And yeah, you know what? We were missing some of the tragedy of that whole system being destroyed, so getting to know a character who's actually from Hosnian Prime, who's deadbeat, obviously corrupt, piece of garbage father somehow wasn't on the planet when it blew up. Most Star Wars protagonists are rags to riches stories. You know, you've got Anakin who's literally a slave and becomes the greatest Jedi and then the greatest Sith in the galaxy and then goes back to being the greatest Jedi. Luke is a farmer and he becomes the man who saves Darth Vader and ultimately has a hand in defeating the Empire. Rey was a scavenger and she becomes the last hope of the Jedi Order and finally 
defeats the Sith Eternal Emperor. What's really interesting about Kaz is he doesn't follow that model. He very much comes from money. His family are very, very wealthy. And yet, once you get past all of the slapstick, you start to see a really, really endearing character. And I would just love to get that on my shelf. He is a missing Star Wars protagonist. And that kind of irks me a little bit. The Star Wars protagonists are the main characters of these stories. And he is such an obvious absence from my shelf. And I kind of want to remedy that. And to be honest, I don't really care what you put in the box with him. Give him blaster, maybe his little trophy, maybe, I don't know, a, a helmet or something. I would really love to get this guy in the Black Series. I think he'd be an absolutely brilliant figure. That's why Kazuda Ziono comes in at number three. I know. We're meeting with the Resistance on Dakar. You should join us. I can't do that, Father. People are counting on me. At number two, we have R1J5, affectionately known as Bucket. Where's my Black Series Bucket? I need to get this droid in the line so, so much. He reminds me so much of Chopper, like this kind of slapped together scrap pile droid that has just got so much attitude bubbling through him. It's such a unique design, like he's so stripped down, like he kind of looks like, like a racing car, and I guess that kind of plays into the themes of the show, but he does. He looks like he's had all the non-essential stuff stripped off of him, and he is just bare bones what you need to make a droid work, and I feel like that would translate so, so well into Black Series form. Now, there is an obvious reason why he is so high up on the list, and that's because he's Bucket, and I need my Black Series Bucket. Now, it's because we've got that new astromech body in the line now, so now is the perfect time to bring us Bucket. He'll look fantastic. The Black Series knocks droids out of the park every single time one comes out, so it would be the same thing for this. And look at how great Chopper looks in the line. Like, he's so beaten up, and it's the last of, like, really, really great weathering that you see in the Galaxy line. I really want to see that translated to Bucket, because I love this droid so, so so much. If I was to do like my top five favorite droids in Star Wars, it would be really hard to keep him out of like the number two, number three spot because he is so, so cool. Yeah, I don't really have a ton of arguments for why I need to get Bucket in the Black Series. I just need it. So I'm just gonna say, give me my Black Series Bucket. Where's my Black Series Bucket? I need him now. Bucket comes in at number two. Hey, I found your helmet. Ow! But my number one pick for characters from Star Wars Resistance that I need to see come to the Black Series is Jarek Yeager. If I'm gonna have Bucket, I would like to have the guy who teams up with Bucket. Like, he's so, so cool. This guy is just great in the story. You get the sense that he's done his hero stuff. You know, he fought in the Battle of Jakku, and he was part of the, the liberation that ended the Galactic Civil War. Great, great stuff. If he wants to spend the rest of his life camped out on a refueling station, just living his best life. Someone who fought at the Battle of Jakku is 100% entitled to that because that was a bloody war zone. Yiger is such a great character. Like, he really doesn't want to get sucked back into all this. Like, he's happy to babysit Kaz for Poe, but he really doesn't want to get dragged back into it until he can't help it. When it happens, when the First Order starts to take control and starts to become a real threat, he does it anyway. He goes back to the fight and he does it anyway, and I love him for it. This really would be such a simple figure. A lot like Kaz, I feel like there are a ton of different ways that we could make this figure work with existing pieces. And then just, as I say time and time again on this series, really nail that head sculpt and it will be absolutely perfect and I will snap it up, no questions asked. If we're talking about figures from Resistance that I need in this line, it's gotta be Yeager. As much as Kaz is missing from like the Star Star Wars protagonists in the Black Series, Yeager is missing from the adult father figure characters. I need to have him, like, standing head and shoulders above my other Resistance characters. Because that's his place, that's where he looks natural, and I love it. I can see it in my head, I can see these figures 
pictures on my shelf and they look fantastic. And the centerpiece is, it's Jaeger and I have to get him in the line. Again, I don't really need a ton of stuff in the box to get me to buy this. Like, you really want to sell me on it, you know, chuck some engineering bits in there, you know, maybe like a little canister of hyperfuel or something. You know something that I would really like though? I really love that Battle of Jakku picture frame that he has. That would be fantastic. Like a little bit of like world building and yeah. I would love it. I think it would be fantastic. He's an absolutely fantastic character, and I think he would be an even better Black Series figure. That's why Jarek Yeager is the number one character from Star Wars Resistance that I need to get into the Black Series. Good job, Cass. Yeager, no! Ah! Go see me. Help him. So there you have it, those were 10 characters from Star Wars Resistance that I need to get into the Black Series because this show is criminally underrepresented. All of the animated shows in Star Wars, they kind of went through the same process. They weren't popular when they came out, they had a kind of a renaissance after they ended where people finally started to express how much they liked them. Now we openly talk about them, we openly discuss how much we love these shows. It happened with Clone Wars, it happened with Rebels, as much as people like to pretend that it didn't. I would just like to skip past all of it, just this once, and just get to the part where we can talk about this show, because I really like it. I'm sticking my neck out here. I really like this show. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that it didn't take me a minute to get on board with it, because it really did. Like, you have to remember, I was coming off the back of Rebels, my favourite Star Wars anything, and this is what replaced it. And yeah, there were growing pains. The animation style didn't sit with me for a while, but giving the show the chance that it deserved the same way I did with Rebels, the same way I did with Clone Wars, I came out loving it just as much. I think it is fantastic. It's criminally short. Just as you are like getting into it, it ends and that sucks, but it's there. It's like the connective tissue that the sequel trilogy needed in those early days to kind of connect what was going on. So with that little mini rant out of the way, let me pass this subject off to you. What are some characters from Star Wars Resistance that you'd love to get Black Series figures of? There are a myriad add off them. I'm already thinking of a ton of characters that I haven't mentioned that absolutely deserve spots on this list. It's just there's so little in the line. There are so many important main characters from this show that are not in the Black Series and we have to get those ones first before we start talking about the background characters. You know, the little guy with the floor scrubber, the woman who runs the bar, like just all of those great characters. They can come later Later, we need to get the core characters from the show represented first, and then we can talk about that stuff. That's what made this list so easy to write. Oh, what characters from Resistance are one of the Black Series? Well, just pull up a list of characters, because none of them are bloody in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to hear, you know, have you watched this series? Is it one that you passed on? Were you maybe waiting for one weirdo on the internet to tell you that it's really good and you should give it a go? If so, do. Just do. Just give it a go. You don't even have to do it for very long. It's two seasons. It's like... 40 episodes of your time. I, I, I honestly think it's worth it. Yeah, let me know down in the comments down below. I'd be very interested to chat with you about it and I'll get back to each and every one of you. Next time on the Wishlist series, we're going to be talking about the first new live action Star Wars movie after a 10 year hiatus. The movie that brought me back to Star Wars after 10 years of wandering in the fandom wilderness. We are talking about The Force Awakens and I'm really, really excited to get into it. I've got a lot to say about these ones, particularly uh, talking about figures that are already in the line that need updating desperately, but at the same time, figures that were missed, characters that were missed, and I'm really looking forward to talking to you about it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. In the meantime, however, I've been Grand Moff Tony. Those were my top 10 Black Series wishlist picks for Star Wars Resistance. You may subscribe when ready. Bollocks. Beast. Blah, blah, blah. I think I just hurled some spit across the screen. What is going on with my beard? I can't keep it out of my mouth. She's an absolutely fantastic figure, and I think she... Figure? <laughs> no, she's not. They haven't made it yet.